Hello everyone and welcome to Community Spotlight, exclusively here on RCN. Glad you could join us. I'm Dan Mowdy. What does it take to put together a video production, a feature length video production, something that is going to rival the best in the country? Well, there's an organization in the Lehigh Valley that knows the answer to that. They're also very good at making shorts and other forms of video. We're talking about Karmic Release. That's right, Karmic Release. Located in the Lehigh Valley, they have been putting some great productions out there, and uh, they have one that they're especially proud of that is just about ready for release. Killian and the Comeback Kids will find out all about what it takes to put such a, a, a mass undertaking together and uh, how it's done here in the Lehigh Valley and elsewhere. We're very happy to have joining us the president of Karmic Release, Nathan Perdee. And uh, yeah, you do recognize <laughs> that face from somewhere. How about the young and the restless, uh, one life to live, Return of Superfly. Nathan, you've done it all over the years. I've done a few things. It's been a lot of fun. Welcome to Community Spotlight. Thank you very much, Dan. Appreciate it. And the next generation also joining us, Taylor Armstrong Purdy. He is uh, Vice President of New Projects and uh, graduate of Fordham University. And uh, you'll see him in Killian and the Comeback Kids. <laughs> and uh, you had a lot to do with that one. <laughs> Yeah. I had a feeling. 14 yeah. hour days I'm here. We're going to hear all lucky. about it. Fantastic. Taylor, welcome to Community Spotlight. Thanks, man. Thanks. Well, uh, how do we get started? Where did it get started? Nathan, we know that uh, you've been in our living rooms for a long time as mm -hmm. uh, a, a popular figure on those soap operas and also uh, Return of Superfly. How did the, the business world get started or the, the world of uh, show business get started for you? Well, it was just a matter of uh, transitioning and changing my life. <clears throat> and I moved from Denver, Colorado to California and sort of fell into the entertainment industry. You know, really, I always refer to it as getting into the business through the back door. And uh, I met a lot, of, a lot of people, a lot of great people who were, you know, really encouraging and saying, you should do this, you should do that. And I was really thinking, you should mind your own business. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing in life. <laughs> and, um, but I did. I, I met some wonderful people who kind of guided me and mentored me and introduced me into the entertainment industry. Fantastic. And uh, I started studying acting. I used to sneak on the lots of General Hospital every single day with uh -huh. my pictures and resume trying to get work. I would do anything, extra work, it didn't matter. And uh, persistence, yeah. persistence, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, as it would, luck would be, would have it, I don't know if it was luck or not. I just, I was, I was just not going to take no as an, as an answer. Uh, but I did. I spent about four years on General Hospital doing extra work. Mm. And st I was taking classes at that time. And I started meeting casting directors from other soap operas and primetime television and started booking roles. You know, I was just determined to do that. And right, uh, as, uh, as it turns out, I went from General Hospital to Young and the Restless from doing extra work and under five work on General Hospital to a contract player on Young and the in a four year period. And it would just sort of snowball from there. Nice, uh, nice. Leaving California, going to New York, um, my wife and I decided to get pregnant and have uh, <clears throat> this guy here next to me. <laughs> Best decision we ever made, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, one day coming home from, from work, I'd moved over to One Life to Live and I was just thinking about karma. And when I think about my life and the things that I've done in my life, karma became a really important thing for me. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I want to change my life. I want to change. I want to make a difference in, in the world. What can I do? And my wife is such an amazing producer, <clears throat> but she's always been working <clears throat> excuse me, under the umbrella of other people's companies. Uh -huh. And we did, together decided to start our own production company. And we came up together with the name of Karmic Release. Fantastic. And I thought, what a great opportunity for her. Now, when she's working, she can work under her own company name mm -hmm. and produce whatever she wants to produce. And she can say yes or say no. And just and she's amazing. Uh, and it's uh, an amazing list here. Documentary films, perhaps, is uh, the key to karmic release. But you've also been involved with television pilots, shorts, uh, PSAs, commercials, and, and the list grows on and on, even business presentations. And, and Taylor, you, you kind of grew up with all of this going on around you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've taken to telling people at parties uh, that, that they kind of bred me to do this, which is pretty, pretty accurate. <laughs> 
So as the next generation, you're taking the bull by the horns. You, you've got the academic chops having graduated <laughs> from the theater program at Fordham, putting together productions throughout that time. Um, where do things stand right now with Karmic Release and your role as uh, new projects coordinator, vice well, president? Well, in the last, uh, I guess in the last four years, once once we I graduated, everything kind of took a new turn, but in the last year or so, they, these guys really let me kind of move the company out of what we had been doing for the last 20 years, which are these like social action, hard hitting like documentaries, um, which are really important, but um, I thought we should expand a little bit more. So the, the two things that we're really excited about right now are um, the movie that we're talking about right now that we filmed out here in the Lehigh Valley a couple months ago for the summer, which is Killing and the Comeback Kids, which is, um, maybe less a musical and more a, a movie with music. We've been saying it's uh, less La La Land and more Once. Uh -huh. um, so that, that's uh, this, this folk rock uh, feature film that we're gonna talk a whole lot more about later. But the other thing that I'm excited about right now is this thing that uh, my college roommate and I came up with uh, about a year and a half ago that we're, we're calling the Yippie Kaye du Cinema, which is a very funny joke if you're into <laughs> 60s French movies. Um, and a link on your website, I know. Yes, <laughs> um, and, and that, that started as um, an interview podcast series where we, we would take two artists who um, are in the same field um, but are on different generations, one who's had a massive career and one who's just had a first big break. So awesome. the last big episode we did was with Lee Grant, who's this great female oh. director, actress, Oscar winner, yeah. and a friend of ours from school named Olivia Macklin, who's just got her first TV show. It's a couple episodes in. It's on Fox right now. It's called LA to Vegas. Huh. Um, so it's got the podcast piece and then kind of spiraled into these like think piece articles and interviews, and it's it's we're about to uh, release this magazine magazine spread for it on this um this model that we've been working with lately, who's got an activist bent to her. Ah, fantastic! So you, you, there's a couple <coughs> of irons in the fire that are maybe are new for uh, karmic release. That's good to hear. Um, we're gonna take a look, and it, this is kind of a great piece that you guys put together to give us a a look at how the frame was built with karmic release, including Nathan in uh, your roles over the years, and <laughs> and some of the new productions that karmic release is putting together. Let's take a look and a All listen. Right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is may I present Mr. Bertram Ross. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. May I present Mr. John Wallowitz? No. Make sure you stay aware. Bullets are real. This isn't training anymore, guys. Any questions? A lot of young kids over here getting hurt. On behalf of the President and the Grateful Nation, I present you the Purple Heart for wounds received in combat. <laughs> no nookie tonight, Joey. Priest. I feel like I was born with a birth defect. And I finally got it straightened out. This person is a transsexual. Transsexuals feel they were born into the wrong body and are driven to change their sex permanently through surgery. God, wait a tailor to tell you, lads. Wait a tailor to you. <laughs> Done. I, I, I am a big fan. <laughs> A leftist leader removed from power in Honduras and forced to leave the country after... The first military coup in Central America in a quarter of a century. But I never felt unsafe when I was growing up. And it was beautiful. It's just a gorgeous country. And everyone will greet you with a smile. They're very giving. It's a very warm and welcoming country. Uh, it's also the murder capital of the world. You talk about leading the edge there, having social issues, productions on social issues that weren't even considered or talked about at the dinner table back then, and, and Karmic Release was right there with them. We're going to be coming back and uh, talking more with Taylor. Nathan, I understand you're on a busy schedule, but thank you so much for joining us My here. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. For our first segment. And uh, Taylor, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh, where things are going with Karmic Release and some of the projects that you're working on. But uh, you just, my head's spinning from seeing that <laughs> clip. More coming. Stay here on Community Spotlight.
Karmic Release Productions coming up with Killian and the Comeback Kids. And uh, it is just starting to become available. We'll keep you up to date on that. You can find out more at karmicrelease.com. Uh, we're here with Taylor Armstrong Perdee, the Vice President of Karmic Release. Very instrumental in uh, this production, Taylor. And, uh, it's a solid pun. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's an amazing production. And, and the great thing, I think, for anybody watching here in this part of the, the country is that you did it right here in the Lehigh Valley part of Pennsylvania. Yeah, um, it was kind of always designed to be that. Um, one of the most difficult things about any artistic endeavor, but especially a film, is is the money. Uh, and so when I was when I was writing this, I was trying to avoid this pit trap that young writers always fall into, which is that you write Star Wars 18 and have twelve dollars to make it. <laughs> um, so I wanted to write something that had that I had the resources for, and what I had the resources for were something that had a cool old house, a summertime cornfield, and um, something that always gives me trouble is the underscore of, of the film. So I, need, I wanted something that I didn't need a, a massive score or a composer or a philharmonic, and I thought, well, what music can I write? And I can write folk music. So I wrote a folk musical. And it's, it's fantastic. And, and you know, there's another challenge, the timing, matching the audio with the video. <laughs> I don't think people understand what goes into that. No, and that's something we're about to really have to deal with. So we recorded all of the, the songs live on the set, um, but the versions you'll hear in the final film, some will be those live versions. There's a few pieces where I'm like playing in downtown Easton, and that hopefully will be just the live, real audio that we did. Oh, nice. But other pieces, we'll have to go to a studio and just sync it all up with the, the great, we'll have to get the band back, um, which they're, they're all, the, the cast is made up of um, like these actor musicians. Um, w w the love interest who is not my love interest in the film, her name is Shannon O'Boyle, and we, she came to audition between the matinee and uh, night shows of Kinky Boots on Broadway, which was really great. Um, and she's a treat for us because she had done Once on Broadway, which is this great little Irish film that became a massive musical hit that was a big inspiration for us when we were working on the film and writing it. Ah, so yeah, the music will be a thing. And there's another familiar face in this film. Actually, a couple of familiar faces, yeah. but the guy who was sitting next to you a few minutes ago, we'll, we'll see Nathan in Yes, this. well, when I, when I was a kid, my mother, who's uh, our producer, uh, made me promise to always write roles for myself and my father. So I did I did this time too. So yeah, it's, it's great. Nathan Nathan's in it, Nathan Pretty, who's, uh, Broadway World just wrote an article about this yesterday, and they call him uh, a consummate actor and soap icon, which, nice. which I like. Um, she plays my father, and then uh, the woman playing my mother uh, is uh, an old compatriot of Nathan's from One Life to Live, whose name is Cassie DePaiva, who's got a fascinating backstory of her own. You guys should look her up, but in the last like year or so, she beat cancer, got nominated for an Emmy, and then decided to do four days on our set. Wow. Yeah. So it was really great to have those, both those big names, because it, it got us a little more attention than a little folk rock musical might have. But also, it was great to have such professionals on set. They really, I mean, between Nathan and Cassie and the 11 year old playing my sister, who we found at um, the Touchstone Theater in Bethlehem. Did you? Uh, wow. it, was, it was a really great kind of like generational arc. Such great resources here that, that you tapped yeah. in the Lehigh Valley. I know Lehigh Valley Performing Arts. Yes, well, I'd, I'd, I'd gone through LVPA, which is, I guess, Charter Arts now, um, uh -huh. and I'm a massive proponent of that school and uh -huh. the education we got. Even some of my best friends there, um, we all kind of went in different paths, but I think pretty much everybody found a, a place in the arts, and one of the uh, co-stars in this film, Emily Mest, was a friend of mine at high, in high school, and she's an actress and a singer living in L.A. right now, but I wrote this, this piece for her, and she came back from L.A., Stayed with her folks to like help us cut down on costs. And it was kind of like playing pretend in my backyard again. Fantastic. Can we take a look? Yes, please. Karmic releases Killian and the Comeback Kids. Let's take a look at a clip. Showing up then. So what, you're just gonna pull out, cancel our shows so you can go 
A and R. It's not like they're gonna have a hard time replacing us, Killian. Come on. You're really gonna do this. No. But I've never seen a moon more full than the one tonight. So I guess that explains why the tide is washed in their remains. saw Taylor and Nathan Purdy, and uh, also the guy playing the mandolin is a kind of familiar figure Yeah, well. Dave Fry, the founder of Godfrey Daniels, came in for just a really quick rainy day, and it was great. I'd written that piece for him. I don't know if he knows that, though. You know, you hooked us. We, we want to know more. What is this film um, about? Yeah, so uh, essentially the storyline follows uh, Killian, which is the character that I play, who's a guy who's just graduated from college and is supposed to go off on a kind of legitimate but small musical tour with his college roommate. He stops back home in his small town. Um, to just get some stuff, take a break before going off on tour. His friend pulls out, uh, Killian gets stuck in the, this town, which is kind of a, a darker version of Easton where steel has pulled out and everything's a little tough. And he finds that like one in three millennials in real life, uh, he and a lot of the other kids he'd known kind of got stuck at, at home after their exorbit exorbitantly priced educations. Uh, yes. So he has to galvanize them, they're gonna start a folk band and they're gonna play this alternate universe of uh, alternate universe version of Music Fest. There's uh, one slot this year for a local act. Fantastic. We're going to keep it the hook there because you don't want to give the whole storyline no. away, but that sounds very interesting. We're going to come right back and talk more about Karmic Release and uh, Killian and the Comeback Kids with Taylor right after this on Community Spotlight. And you're back with us here on Community Spotlight. You probably recognize some of the faces that you saw in Killian and the Comeback Kids. How about the locations? We have the filmmaker with us here, Taylor Purdy, and uh, also the star and uh, director, I guess. Yeah. You, you had a couple of roles in this piece. Yeah, it's the only way to make anything <laughs> these days, man. We, we saw uh, some familiar sights out there. Maybe you can give us an yeah, idea yeah. of what went into the decision making as to where to shoot and, and uh, how it all got well, done. Much in the same way as I have to wear so many hats to get anything done. Um, <laughs> I needed to, to write and stage things in places that I um, both could imagine and knew well when I was writing them and had access to. So most of it, I mean, it's all throughout the Lehigh Valley, um, but primarily it's shot in downtown Easton uh -huh. and uh, in Williams Township. Those are the, the primary locations. The, the family's house is, uh, is in Williams Township. Mm -hmm. But also we shot in Bethlehem, we shot at Bethlehem Steel briefly. There's a, a subplot about the steel in this fictional version of our world going away. Uh, there was this cornfield right over the Northampton County line in Bucks County that we used, that we were very stressed about getting. But finally we, got, we tracked down the owner and he said we could use it. And then we were filming one day and somebody else was like, that's my field. And we're like, we talked to him, they're like, no. John always says it's his fault, it's my field. <laughs> but everyone was very happy to let us film our folk rock movie on their field. Uh, so, all over the valley and it was you know we shot it in at the end of august and through september so it's you know a beautiful pennsylvania summer and all of the uh the crew too um pretty much the entire production team sans of course some of the performers uh, are, are either locals or people that are, are studying here so the, the director of photography is probably the farthest away that we had a, a key position come from and his name's ian mosley duffy this brilliant kid who's been doing like music videos and documentaries in philadelphia for a while and I convinced to come on a wild ride with me, and he's based in Philadelphia. Nice. Um, but we built the crew out of these kind of two groups of people. There's uh, this conglomerate of like film nerds and filmmakers in Easton called FIFO or FIFO. They meet every first Tuesday. They're very cool, and they. Uh, I went there one day, and they lent me a lot of their like youthful energy, um, and also a bunch of the the film students from DeSales that were still around over the over the course of the summer. And I, I was really glad to have local local minds and local eyes because those were the people that knew what this this place looked like uh, yes yeah. Um, important yeah and, and one of the strangest days we were shooting so there's this subplot um, subplot about my character's race it's never mentioned and it's kind of 
we talk so much about race and representation in Hollywood these days, right. and I feel like the best way to deal with that is to just not mention it, to have a character of any race just going about their day to day. So um, there's my character, my black father and white mother, and my little mixed race sister, and we're the only people of color in the picture, um, and that was intentional. Everyone else is just the people who would really be around. Right. Um, but there's this recurring theme of this um, pickup truck driving around with a Confederate flag in mm -hmm. the uh, in the back window. Which, uh, when people read, I, I wanted it to be this, like, is it going to be dramatic or not? I'm not going to say if it's dramatic or not. Right. Um, but that's something that actually happens uh, on the road that I grew up on. Um, and not in a, a frightening way, but in, like, I was trying to capture that, that detail way. And when we were driving the Confederate flag through downtown Easton, I was worried that people wouldn't care. People did care. They did not like that we were doing that. And I was very glad to have my AD. Uh -huh. um, tell people it was for a movie and not to be worried or offended. How about that? We're going to take a look here, Taylor, at the contact information, where to find the website, karmicrelease.com. And uh, you've got the social media world pretty well covered as well with uh, ways to reach out and, and keep up with all that's going on with Karmic Release. Killian and the Comeback Kids is uh, a feature that uh, is, I guess, just about ready to be released? Just about. Um, we are in post-production, which is the editing, and we are, we're crowdfunding a little bit for the, for the last bit so we can make the music sound good. You can follow us on any of the social media, and you'll see that uh, Indiegogo Kickstarter. Fantastic. Lots of perks. You can, I don't know, have dinner with, have a phone call with one of the stars, one of the soap stars. It's a good time. Well, great thanks to your mom and dad, Nathan and Roberta. Yeah. Roberta helped put this show together. So great thanks to both of them and to you for coming on and taking some time out of your day where you could be doing lots of creative stuff. But <laughs> thankfully, you will be doing some creative stuff here. You brought your guitar mm -hmm. along. And tell us about this piece real so quick. So this is, this is a song called Wilds of the West. It's the second or third song in the movie. Uh, and I, I co-wrote it with the... Uh, my childhood best friend who co-wrote all of the music with me and is this band as well. His name's Liam Higgins. He's a great bassist. Well, Taylor, please take us out. And thanks, folks, for joining us here on Community Spotlight. Please stick around and enjoy Taylor Perdi playing as we roll the credits. Go ahead, Taylor. Thanks again. Some nights I dream about the wilds of the West. Hope and a man's wits were all of the best And all it took was to go outside and put it to the test But when I wake in the day I'm far from the wild, wild west So now I listen to the moon song and I sing upon the tide And I wander for a hollow where a man like me could hide With forbidden love and out